So as we know, President Biden's major problem, the thing that really made him uh, leave the race was his age and mental acuity. Voters did not feel good about that. Kamala Harris is 20 years younger than him, so she doesn't inherit that problem. But what you're saying is she inherits the problems of the administration, like the record on immigration and like the economy. So she has that wrath around her. Republicans can say, hey, this is essentially Biden Jr. Absolutely. And you notice that within minutes of uh, the announcement, uh, a pro-Trump super PAC had an attack ad out on Kamala Harris that underscored this specific point and that said that she owns all of the policy decisions of the administration and some of the big failures like uh, immigration. You also have to bear in mind that in a previous poll that we conducted together about a month ago, we asked voters of their expectation. Did they think that Biden would be able to complete uh, a second term? And if not, when uh, did they expect Kamala Harris to step in and take over for Biden? A majority expected her to step in and take over for Biden when the first year of the second Biden administration. And then the numbers grew significantly from there on. So a lot of voters were also factoring in uh, the fact that a vote for Biden was to a very large extent also a vote vote for uh, Kamala Harris. And, uh, you know, based on what I'm seeing right now, uh, uh, the fundamentals are uh, stacked up at a disadvantage for her. We'll see whether or not this momentum after the announcement uh, changes anything in a sustained basis or not. But uh, based on the numbers that we have, it's too early to tell. And what we're seeing clearly is significant traction from Trump and the Republican, which is really also translating uh, uh, in the generic ballot and uh, downrange. The GOP in our poll uh, since the convention finished has also doubled its lead in the generic ballot uh, from plus two to now uh, plus five. This is a question that asks, who are you willing to vote for in the upcoming election? for, uh, as your uh, congressional representative. And uh, this validates in a great degree why Biden uh, decided to step aside because he was not able to help the rank and file downrange. And in fact, you can make the argument that he was hurting many Democrats that are running in competitive, um, in competitive uh, downrange elections. So again, the picture as, we, as we're as we seeing it right now is that the post-RNC bump is real. Kamala seems to have some momentum. Can she translate it into better polling numbers? Yet to be seen. So Democrats in those battleground states, I mean, they were valid for their concerns based on this poll that a Biden on top of the ticket would affect them in their congressional races and their Senate races. Yes, uh, essentially uh, left and changed. Uh, uh, the polling showed that Republicans had gained in the generic ballot. This number is much more difficult to move than the presidential horse race number because it reflects the opinions of voters across many different uh, districts and jurisdictions on a very wide array of potential candidates. And the fact that the generic ballot number also doubled after the Republican national convention tells you that the republicans landed several messaging wins with the electorate at large during that convention that don't just have to do with president trump but they translate uh, downrange to the republican rank and file 